Welcome to Abundant Love Sunday School live stream. I am your moderator, Elder Chris Halfacre, and to my left we have Sister Cynthia Franks, Evangelist Sister Symphony <laughs> Franks, and then we have to my right Sister Natasha Hilliard. And this mic is is bright. I might have to go back there and adjust something real quick. This is, this is number four. <laughs> Have to excuse me, I'm usually the main one behind, but it's ringing. Number four, just bring it down just a touch. Testing, test, ah, there we go, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. And the title of our lesson this morning is called Jesus Claim to deity, and it's coming from St. John chapter 8, verses 31 through 38, then it goes to verses 48 through 56, then it goes from 58 through 59. And before we get started, I'm going to have the evangelist pray for us. Father, we thank you for your mercy and your kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. God, we love you and adore you. We thank you for waking us up this morning. We ask that you be in the midst of this Sunday school panel. God, give us insight in the name of Jesus. God, help us to say what you want us to say in Jesus' name. Touch, uh, touch our moderator this morning and my other sister on the panel, God. I ask that you bless us and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, nineteen. Woo. <sighs> yeah. Um, <laughs> we're going to uh, read the scripture, and we're going to uh, we're going to do six verses a piece, and then. Uh, finish off the rest. Amen. I want to start with Sister uh, Natasha Hilliard. And once again, uh, our lesson text is coming from St. John chapter 8, verses 31 through 38, verses 48 through 56, and verses 58 through 59. So I'll read 31 through 36 or 37. 37? Okay. 36. Okay. Number, well, verse 31. Then Jesus said to the Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Then they answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whoever, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. Verse 38, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Number 48, then answered the, Jew, the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hath a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. And I seek not my own glory, that there is one that seeketh and, judge, and judges. 51, verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keeps my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jew unto him, now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, if a man keepeth my saying, 
he shall never taste of death. Verses 50 through 59 reads, Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead, whom maketh thyself, thou thyself. Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if you, if I should say, I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was I am. Hmm. Then took up these, excuse me, then they took up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Wow. Yo, that, that last verse right there was something. Jesus <laughs> did. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was like, he, he, he said what he said and he was out. He was out. <laughs> All right. Jesus' claim to deity. Okay. Before we even get started, we're going to start talking, because you know, Bishop been doing this recently, so we might as well get it out the way. What, 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 does, uh, what does deity mean to you? Um, hmm. Holy. Okay. Um. I actually looked up the definitions because it hit me. This lesson hit me hard, but um, what I came up with was God, divine status, the creator or supreme being. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alexa was speaking out loud. <laughs> And, and you are right. Your definition is right. There's um, the actual term is a god or goddess, a deity of ancient Greece, divine status, quality of nature, a ruler by uh, delusion of deity. We just talking about we just talking about God. We talking about the Father. Yeah. We talking about the Most High. This th this is in essence what we're talking about. You know, the definition, the dictionary definition just don't hold, hold it right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're just going to get straight to it, okay? okay? I'm going to read the introduction. And the reason why I don't read the introduction because there's, um, there's, some, there's some, some nuggets in here. Okay. It says, in this present age, the truth is not always well received. See, we starting off good. Even though people raise their right hand and swear an oath to tell nothing but the truth, Many lie anyway. Mm -hmm. Corporate scandals <laughs> seem to occur regularly, yeah. and some of the highest executives have been convicted for falsifying records. It is now commonplace for people to lie about anything and everything. Mm. Dishonesty by no means um, something new to our society. History is filled with lies, sadly. Lying goes along um, quite naturally with uh, secular society, for there is no accepted standard of truth by people which people live. Only the, each individual's preference. In contrast, the child of God knows God's revealed truth. That is, that, only, that is the only standard by which people can rightly measure themselves. Okay, our lesson outline comes in three parts. Um, needing the truth, and that comes from St. John chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. The second part is confronting accusations, St. John 8, 48 through 53, and honoring Christ. It's the third part, St. John 8, 54 through 56, and 58 
through 59. Okay, let's dive right into it. It says in verse 1, uh, 31, Then said Jesus unto those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples. And, and verse 32 says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. <laughs> and in verse 33, they answer him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How saith thou, ye shall be made free? Okay. First three verses. Talk about a misunderstanding of what Jesus is trying to say. Mm -hmm. And even though they misunderstood what he was trying to say, they were still inaccurate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he wasn't necessarily talking about physical slavery. He was talking about uh, slavery to sin. Right. But before we even dive in further, what does it mean to be a slave to sin or slavery to sin? Bondage. Basically, it is bondage. You, you're, you're stuck. Um, how do I want to say it? You're stuck in one spot, I'll say it that way. Because, first of all, they started off wrong because they felt like they was okay. <laughs> they felt like just because uh, they were a descendant of Abraham, they was cool. It was all good. So, no, I'm not in, you know, they didn't see past that tradition in their life. Mm -hmm. That's how I took it. They, you know, they were stuck in this tradition, and they couldn't see past that. That's like I can't see past that door because the door is closed. Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> That's good. It's interesting. They're leaning on to uh, Abraham more than them themselves. Mm -hmm. See, what they think are like, oh, well, you know, our father Abraham, we, we got this thing on lock. It's kind of like uh, people in the church are depending upon their mother's prayer, their father's mm, prayer, or the pastor's going. prayer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because, because of that, they think they got it. They don't have to yeah. put in no, any right. work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what does slavery, uh, uh, slavery to sin mean to you? For me, it was more or less, um, I was going to go with the, the grandmother's prayer, how our generation might think that we don't need Jesus because my great grandmother prayed for me or my grandmother prayed for me, thinking that I can ride along with what she already spoke to the Lord. Even though Abraham already professed those things um, for the future, for his next generation, that doesn't necessarily mean that they can ride on it. You have to have your own relationship with mm -hmm. God. Um, but slavery, <laughs> And black history just passed, so I'll use that as an example as well. Um, our ancestors was bounded, chained, whipped, um, beaten, in bondage for things because of the color of their skin, basically. And now that we're not in that particular uh, predicament, doesn't necessarily mean that we don't um, that we're not supposed to um, honor what they've been through, right. not only honor what they've been through, but as well as respect what they've been through. Um, slavery is, it's not a, speaking spiritual now, it's not a permanent place. It, it's a temporary place. Um, you can always be dismissed or sold or traded um, but when you're the son or a daughter of God, that means that you're at home. It's not a place that somebody can take you out of. Amen. Being a slave to sin. <laughs> we all talked about being, um, being in bondage, but you, in essence, like you said, you're stuck. You're in a place where you cannot move forward in the things of God because 
you're still focused on the things, the old man, the things that you were supposed to be brought out of. We are, uh, where is it at? We're going to go to Second Corinthians. Come on. Okay. Three we going old school. <laughs> we go old school. <laughs> See the Lord, the Lord, we got it. We got it. <sighs> Second Corinthians five and seventeen. Oh, five and seventeen. Okay. Yep. Okay. See when your when your electronics don't work. Yeah. Go back to you got to go old school, <laughs> and you got to know how to find these, these scriptures, mm -hmm. 5 and 17, and it reads, Therefore, mm -hmm. if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Okay, we're supposed to be new. We're supposed to be a new man. We're supposed to be a new creature. Right. Uh, if you're slavery to, uh, a slavery or in slavery to sin, that means you're not a new creature. You still, you still the old man. You haven't. First of all, we talk about Mother Bush all the time. You don't peek in this, but it's a constant, right. Uh, right. a constant walk. Yeah. You're learning every day. There's always going to be something new that comes about. But if you're a slavery to sin, you're in essence stuck. You're you haven't you haven't um, advanced to the next right. uh, the next trial because you th uh, as soon as you tackle one or you feel like you you got over one, there's something else that's right. going to come up. Right. The enemy is going to come from all sides, yeah. and you when you think that you got it together, he'll hit you with something else. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah, I, there's some things that I continue to have to to revisit because I haven't conquered them. Right. I think the good thing about it is that it's not learned as in past tense, like you've already arrived. Mm -hmm. It's learning. You're, it's a continuous thing. Amen. It says, um, verse 30 says uh, that as Jesus spoke, many believed on him mm -hmm. and then addressed those believers telling them how to live out their faith as disciples right. uh, to be disciples Jesus told them they needed to abide in his word mm -hmm. seeking to live according to his teachings mm -hmm. what does it mean to abide to stay there to I just call it hang on in there mm -hmm. stay there um, whichever way he go you go whatever he tells you to do you do you stay there Amen. To, to dwell or to live. Um, the best thing I can think of right now is to be steadfast, like she said, to hold on to. Okay. I got something different, slightly get, different. What you get? Abide, abide means to obey. Okay. Yes. If you are abiding by something, you obey mm -hmm. or comply with the rule. Yeah. If you don't abide by the rules at school, you might find yourself in the principal's office. Mm -hmm. To accept a rule or act according to a recommendation is to abide by them. Yeah. If a judge makes a ruling, you have to abide by their that decision. Is. That's good. And so we're talking about Jesus here. Right. Mm -hmm. So if he's talking about um, abiding his word, that means obey his word. Right. You know, which is interesting. We, we talk about, I shouldn't say we talk about, in this lesson, you have some of the, um, some of the Jews that believe, and then you had the, the non-believers. And then when we start talking about uh, people who, who get mad at you, mm -hmm. and the moment they get mad, they have no, 
no nothing accurate, no type of intelligent response to whatever you're talking about. They resort to uh, calling you names. names. <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, and I'm go, I'm getting a little ahead of it, but you know they they they, they was calling Jesus' name because they li literally couldn't find fault in what he was talking mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. you, that's what little children do. Yeah. If you ever if you ever see the kids and you you have a conversation with them and you try to uh, articulate certain things, if they, can't, uh, if they can't respond in kind, it's like, I don't like you, you ugly. They'll just right. say something right. <laughs> crazy <laughs> like that. And, and, exactly. and this is how they were acting. They were acting <laughs> yeah. like little children <laughs> because they was upset that Jesus had spoke truth to them and they had no rebuttal. Hmm. This, is, this is how it is in church today. When we, the pastor comes up and he speaks truth. This is the B-I-B-L-E. This is our roadmap. This is the word of God. This is what we supposed to apply. Not just read, we supposed to apply the word. Right. Not just read it. So people pick their favorite scriptures out of the Bible, but they don't apply the, the, the scripture that's in, in other uh chapters, verses, mm -hmm. and so <clears throat> applying the word, abiding in the word is something that we have to do. It's not a uh, something that we, well, yeah, I do that. No, it's, no. it's, a, it's, it's <laughs> in essence, yeah, you, <laughs> it's a prerequisite. You have to do you it. Do it's it. not something that you can just think, oh, yeah, I, 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 I'll both uh, obey this or I abide in this, but I won't abide in this. From Genesis to Revelations, that's the word. Everything in between. We cannot, we cannot just sit back and just say, well, today... I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about that, but when the when the scripture talks about loving your neighbor, you're like, oh no, I can't, I, I I'm not feeling that scripture, not today. No, no, no. Abide in His word means every word, mm -hmm. every verse. People pick and choose what they want to do. Bottom line, if if I say um, I wanna, mm -hmm. if 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 the pastor says I'm not, I, I need to do this, mm -hmm. I need to do that, then if it doesn't fit my, my comfort zone, then I pick and choose what I want to do and how I want to handle it. And I got so much stuff here. I, I you would have thought you'd have thought this is hieroglyphics. <laughs> that's that's yeah. just written all in here because I got so much stuff. Uh, <laughs> Genuine salvation results in a clean heart and a new person, which I talked about in 2 Corinthians um, 5 and 17. And like I said, some of the Jews uh, was listening to Jesus, could not comprehend some of what he was talking about. Their response uh, to their uh, was not in bondage, which I talked about. I'm just going down because I was not reading my notes. I was just flowing in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, sin in a person's life is like a taskmaster who makes cruel demands. A person living apart from God does not have the spiritual strength to live apart from sin and therefore is a slave to it. We basically talked about that. Um, here we go. Abraham was known for having faith in God. These Jews obviously didn't have that faith. <laughs> so how, how are they talking about they're, they're, uh, they're the sons of Abraham, and yet they show no attributes of their father? If for example, people look at me and then, then they look at my mom and they be like, you know, you, you look like your mom, you know, because we have uh, some features, you know. I mean, when you're part of the family, you have some characteristics of your family. There's certain things that you do that um, resembles 
your uh, part of your family. Sometimes it can be your your mom, your dad, your your aunt, your uncle, your uh, your grandfather, your grandmother. But you have some features that resemble who your family is. Mm -hmm. What makes them? <laughs> If they if 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 Abraham is what we call the father of faith, and they show no faith, then what part of the family is he? Are they are they adopted? Are they uh, are they step? Are they uh are they just claiming? You know how we have people that we that we call because like you know uh, Mother Cos Mother Kyra Smith. I call her cousin all the time. Now we're not blood, but I call her cousin. They're, they're showing no, no characteristics, characteristics of Abraham, is all I'm trying to say. Now let's go into uh, confronting the accus um, accusations. Um, and this is from verses 48 through 53. And start with conflict in 48 and 49. When Jesus once again told the unbelieving Jews that they were not hearing God's word because they did not belong to him, <laughs> they snapped back. <laughs> they got mad because Jesus told them that they, <laughs> they, wasn't, they didn't belong to uh, his father. Right. They I wasn't acting like, 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 like you would say saints was. Right. You, you know, there's certain attributes that you should have in your Christian walk. Yes. What is your, uh, what is some good attributes as a Christian? Kindness. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, kindness. <laughs> and they, oh, you, you, want, you can add on if you like. Um, just being forgiving. Mm -hmm. okay. God forgave us. We should be forgiving and loving. Okay. Kindness, loving, and forgiving, those are good attributes. <laughs> they weren't showing any of them. Right. There, there's, right. there's plenty of attributes, but yeah, they wasn't even showing them. Mm -hmm. where, where was the love for Jesus? Mm. <laughs> As they, the, the, the upset, the angrier, and the frustrated that they became, they got to the point, not that I'm trying to get to the end, but they wanted to kill Jesus. Mm -hmm. the, the last verse was they was picking up their stones before Jesus, <laughs> before Jesus mm -hmm. dipped. People don't like you to confront them. Ooh, here we go. <laughs> People don't like you to confront or, or challenge what they believe. So if you, it's like, a, like we talk about the little kid. It's like a little kid. If you challenge me, I'm going to clap back on you. As, as the younger people say, because I'm old now. Mm -hmm. But anyway, they're going to go back at you because nobody wants to be proven wrong. Everybody had their own opinion, and in your opinion, you don't want to be proven wrong. So here it is that Jesus is telling them this, but they know what they know. So he can't be right, so he, he's the devil because he can't be right because we know what we know, and we are the ascendants, and we are the chosen ones. <laughs> so therefore, we can't be wrong. They feel like it's a pride and a flesh thing. Um, I think verse 30 before 31, it spoke about how he was speaking to many believers. So some of them believed and was even with the ones that were even talking about it, but nobody said nothing. Mm -hmm. Everybody was basically on one accord, taking up for each other and taking up that they was behind, uh, we descendants of Abraham. But Proverbs 16 says, pride goeth before destruction. Mm -hmm and an haughty spirit before a fall. He guaranteed them that the, your fall gonna be death. <laughs> That's gonna be your fall. They got mad. They resorted to name calling. They called him a Samaritan and demon possessed. <laughs> What's funny is this is this part is what got me a little bit because you find you find you find nuggets in every part of the scripture and I, yeah. I think I, I, I snuck past this on many occasions. 
Jesus didn't even get upset at them calling no, him a Samaritan. Right, no, right. So saints, mm -mm. saints <laughs> of the high, <laughs> the most high, <laughs> when somebody says something um, that is not true, how should you respond? Jesus didn't respond in terms of the Samaritan part because, see, he wasn't going, I, and I'm going to get to it. The demon possessed, for example, here we go. Jesus did not respond to the first accusations. He knew that the Samaritans was just as valuable in God's eyes as anyone else. Mm -hmm. So he let that accusation go without a response. Sometimes you just got to let it, let it roll off your shoulders. You know, sometimes you're like, you know what? They just, they just lashing out. I'm just going to let it ride. But then on the second part, to call him demon possessed, however, was a, a matter of grave dishonor. Jesus wasn't having it. He was like, uh-uh. He said um, he was not about to be associated with the devil in any way. For his intent was to honor his father. He was not seeking glory for himself. Instead, he said, this is one that seeketh and judges. That comes from verse 50. This was a reference to his father who seeks, seeks Jesus' glory and judges those who dishonor him. Okay, saints. Um, Sometimes people say some stuff about us, but if they get to the point to where they start, uh, they start talking about your father, which is in heaven, like you, uh, don't be talking about my father. <laughs> Look, we sit back and we let people, the world, everybody is able to say anything, but the church as itself, we stay right. quiet about stuff. Right. We get quiet. Everybody tells their own truth. Everybody defends their own selves, but yet we're supposed to stay idly quiet while people talk about our Lord and Savior. When are we going to rise up and speak up? Jesus spoke up. Yes, he, did. He, he picks and chooses when he speak up, but he was like, you know what? I'm going to let that ride. However, don't talk about my father. No. When are we going to say, you know, um, don't say that. We have to be bold. Yeah. We have to. Uh, sure. We have to be strong and and defend who we serve. Yeah. We cannot just sit idly and just take it. That's mm -hmm. right. You know, people gonna get mad. They're like, "There, them Christians go. They always get upset and get." No, you. <laughs> if you can say what you want and what you believe, I can do the same. Yeah. We should be able to do the same. We should be able to say, uh, no, uh, th that's not, right. first of all, you, you don't speak, <laughs> don't speak bad about my father. This is who he is. This is, this is what, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? This is what he represents. And what you're doing right now is, um, I'm not going to take it. I'm not going to allow it. Mm -hmm. And, um, in fact, before I get too hot, I'm just going to get out, get, move right. away from right. you. Right. Amen. Amen. It says, um, good Lord. Sorry, I looked at the time. I shouldn't have looked. <laughs> when, when, you, when, you, when you look at the time, you, you see how fast uh, time be going. We're going to go into the, uh, the research and discussion because I want to have some more discussion here. Um, how should, let me see, oh, I didn't get to it yet. Here we go. Are there terms you uh, use without thinking that might denigrate other people or other groups. Here we go. This is what we, I was kind of sort of talking about here. There are, um, this, this is from verse 48. Let me read it real quick in your hearing. Because I'm jumping all over the place. 
But it says, then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil. Okay. Let's, <sighs> nope, I'm going to the next one. I'm sorry, y'all, I'm, I'm all over the place. Um, this is, do, 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 do. When Jesus said that those keeping his words would never see death, he was not referring to spiritual death, mm -hmm. or he was referring to spiritual death, but not physical death. Okay, clearly we all die a physical death. Only the generation living at um, the time of Christ's return will uh, escape physical death. But all who abide in Jesus by faith will always remain alive with him, even though they die at the moment of physical death, their souls will be with him in heaven. And as his return, they will receive resurrection bodies in the new heaven and the earth. When you're dealing with people who don't believe the word of God, what is, what is your response? How do, you, how do you respond to people who don't believe the word? Because you're, you're telling truth. So people that don't believe, how do you respond? Because there's scriptures about how you handle that. What do you do? Or how do you respond to people who don't want to believe the truth? We have people who are in ministry who, who listen to the word, listen to the uh, pastor, our bishop, uh, say what does say the Lord, and they don't respond to in kind. So how do you respond to people who don't um, acknowledge the truth? First of all, you have to be slow to speak <laughs> because right. you have to be very selective with your words, especially if they do they believe or they don't with your question. I would say they are so-called believers. Okay. Probably backsiders or something. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You Come have on. To you want, you know, I know you want to I know you want to speak. I got the mic right there for you. It's on to everything. We're going to welcome um, Evangelist Monique Glassby to the microphone. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise Good praise morning, Lord. Sunday School. Um, I would say the, the scripture that comes to me, because you have to have a mind to receive the word. Mm -hmm. And if somebody mentally, if their mind and their heart isn't aligned with the word of God, you can repeat it to them time and time again mm -hmm. because you have to be willing to accept the word what it, whatever wherever it falls you have to be willing to accept it but I thought about the scripture saying some plant some water but God gives an increase you just have to make sure you give them the word versus your opinion right mm -hmm. if you give somebody the word the thing is God loves us all mm -hmm. he gives us the word that we need to move from where we're at right. But to accept the word is up to that individual. Right. So I look at, if I'm telling you this and I'm telling you this out of love, not trying to cut you down right. or right. trying to get back or clap back, right. I'm telling you this out of love because I see you're in error and you don't receive it, I say, well, Lord, you allowed me to plant on that person. Lord, you allowed me to water that person. Now you give the increase. Amen. As we wind down to the close, I want to talk about this where... Um, Jesus said, he, uh, verse 58, 59, and then we're going to go into uh, our closing remarks. Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was I am. Then he took, okay, I just read uh, 58, because we already talked about the stones a little bit. Okay. They got upset at Jesus because he said, I am. 
before Abraham was I am. Mm -hmm. So he's basically he's basically saying that um, that he's God, and as as people who as people who just uh, we look at the God in individuals. And it's interesting how people get upset and frustrated mm -hmm. because they see the blessings mm -hmm. on your life and don't understand what you had had to go through mm -hmm. to uh, to be blessed. There are some things that you go through as as Christians, as saints mm -hmm. that everybody don't know about Jesus. They don't even know what he's about to go through. They have no idea. Mm -hmm. And yet. Um, once again, speaking truth. And I think the majority of everything that they were dealing with because it was more carnal minded than it was spiritual. Because if they were, uh, if they were thinking spiritually, uh, a lot of what, was, what Jesus was saying would have resonated. But some of the things that they, that they were talking about or they got frustrated about, they, they, they wasn't even on the same page as right. what Jesus was talking about. The right. prime example was when he was talking about slavery to sin. He wasn't just talking about a physical slavery. He was talking right. about spiritual slavery. Right. That was an example of them not necessarily um, being in the spirit. Right. They was thinking carnally. And I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> we have about a good 30 seconds apiece. <laughs> so uh, y'all, uh, closing remarks. Amen. Um, this was a good lesson. Mm -hmm. I, I was, as I was studying it, and I was like, they, in today's time, people have, as I stated before, their own concepts and ideas about how they should, how, how can I put it? They take the word out of context. That's what yeah. I want to say. Mm -hmm. And so they, they pick and choose what they want to use. Oh, I can fast a couple of days, but... I can't speak to my neighbor when she's coming out the house. You, you see what I'm saying? So you pick and choose what makes my flesh feel comfortable. And when I'm comfortable, you can't upset my comfort. People don't want you to, people don't want you to tap into their comfort because that is going to allow God to come in and cultivate and move them forward. So I, re I read this in the book, and I'm going to read it real quick. It says, the question we are confronted with today is where we are in terms of relationship with Christ. Have we accepted his word as truth but stopped short of a personal relationship with him? Is he simply fire insurance to us? Mm. That's good. Or is he our savior or or?" Is he Savior and Lord? Mm -hmm. How well do we know him? How deep into his word have we gone? May, uh, may all of us search our hearts and answer truthfully such questions. May no one dismiss the matter of being of little or no importance. Mm -hmm. oh. Key thing. Lord and yes. Savior. It's not just it's not just our Savior. It's Lord and Savior. Amen. Um, it's good to accept Christ, believe in your heart, and confess your sins to be saved. Um, but this particular lesson shows us how to continue to uh, have the ground to work your faith. Uh, Galatians 5 and 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in liberty, wherewith Christ hath made us free, and, he, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. We have to believe on him. We have to continue in his word. We have to become disciples, know the truth, and be made free. Jesus is God. Amen. And uh, you know what? Our time is up, so I would just like to uh, say thank you all who uh, tuned in. This lesson had so much to get into, and I was so flabbergasted. I was all over the place trying to find different points, and 
when you get so excited about the word, sometimes you you like, mm -hmm. okay, I, I should have numbered each and everything that I wanted to, yeah. but um, I just thank you all that are tuned in, and for those who are um, going to be here at our Sunday school that continues at 10 o'clock, and we will see you all at, at our um, morning worship at 11 a.m. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you.